With a lot of gaming YouTube channels starting up and making money by playing video games, it makes sense why many want to cash into this market. As you may know, even I tried to cash into this market. I'm Random Square, a variety YouTuber that started with a terrible sense of quality and a crap MacBook that could hardly record. Now I can't say I'm any better now, but I can share some tips that can help you not start out the way I did. This video is mostly for recording console games through a computer, but you could also still use this video to record from your own computer. Here's what to expect to hear in this tutorial. Your equipment, your software, and a few bonus tips that made my life easier. So without further ado, let's get into this tutorial. One of the more important things to have is a capture card. Today there are so many options to choose from, however, I use the Elgato HD60. I was able to cop one for only around $80, but online they rose to price to like $200, so if I were you I'd probably go with a cheaper alternative. Elgato made an HD60S that costs around $179, but sometimes you can find a sale dropping it down to $140. If you don't got the pocket change for that, there are some that cost around $40 but I don't know about cheaper alternatives. I've never had one, so I don't know if they're better or worse, or I don't know. Uh, to be able to use the capture card, you're gonna need to get a decent PC or a laptop. You know, we don't discriminate here. I'm gonna start off by saying that you can't just pick out any computer you find laying around, all right? I mean, you can, but it'll decrease the quality leading to other problems like software compatibility and, and all that stuff. What I use is a Windows 10 Ryzen 9 3900X with the RX 5700 XT and 32 gigabytes of RAM. This is a bit overkill, especially for console recording. I do it for mostly for gaming power on my PC, but if you can't get one with those specs, a good budget PC should be around $400 or more due to scalping and availability. Elgato recommends that the minimum specs are Windows 10 64-bit 4th generation Intel Core i5 CPU, sound card, 4GB total installed RAM or higher, built-in USB 2.0 port, and yeah, pause the video for the uh, specs on the screen, I'll put them up. Now, you will also need a microphone. This step, many take for granted. Audio to me is important as a viewer. I want to be able to understand the sounds that I am hearing, so please don't get a dollar store mic. You can if you truly want to, but Blue released a decent microphone that's only about $50. <laughs> or if you like the quality of my mic, you could pick yourself up a Rode NT-USB, which will run you about $169. Once you got a microphone, you're ready to shift your focus onto a TV. You can get any kind of TV, even a monitor with HDMI inputs. But for me, I prefer a smart TV. If you want a setup like mine, make sure to pick up Bluetooth headphones and a TV that supports Bluetooth audio. That's because when I record my Switch, I need headphones that connect to my TV so I can hear it in sync with the game. When I use my recording software and try to listen through the recording software, it desyncs and it makes everything weird. So I just get Bluetooth audio so I can connect to my TV instead of directly to the Switch. You can get a splitter that Elgato provides to get around using another headset, but I'm lazy <laughs> and I just prefer my own way. This may be obvious, but you also need a console you want to record with. Mine being a Nintendo Switch, but what's cool about capture cards, you can capture just about any device using an HDMI, unless they restrict you with HDCP, which is what the PS3 did, making it harder to record stuff from it. Which is why back in the day, you, it's more common to see Xbox 360 videos than it was PS3. As for software, this is the easiest part, or what I like to call the free part, because it's free. The software that you'll need to download is Game Capture from Elgato, if you got an Elgato, OBS slash Streamlabs, depending on which one you like, and an editing software. Game Capture is important if you have an Elgato because if you don't download it, OBS or Streamlabs won't pick up the game recording due to the drivers not being installed. I use Streamlabs OBS because it's easier to use and more consumer friendly. Easier to pick up, easier to use, all that stuff, you know, you got it. As for editing, if you do choose to edit, there are many options you can go with. Premiere Pro at a monthly cost of around $20 to $31 per month, or you can get a free alternative, DaVinci Resolve, which is pretty nice for those who want to do professional edits but don't want to dish out $200 on something like Sony Vegas. Uh, after you received all that, you are ready to get started. So let's get straight into the video recording process. I will be using Streamlabs OBS to show you exactly how to record, how to separate your audio, and how to set up your Elgato. So your first step is 
downloading the Elgato game capture software. I already have it downloaded and installed. So you just go to the Elgato game capture software here. I'll put the link in the description down below and you just download it, install it, and let's open it up. So once it's do done installing, you just open up the game capture software. It'll pop up right in front of your screen. Uh, I already have it in use on another application, but, but we only installed it so that we can download the drivers and get it able to use other software. So now we open Streamlabs software right now. So I'm gonna start a new, uh, I'm gonna start a new scene just so I could show you everything that I'm gonna be doing. So when you start off Streamlabs OBS, it'll just pop up as like an empty slate. Nothing will be there. You'll have to sign into YouTube, Twitch, or anything like that. So this scene thing, you could change the scenes from live if you decide to like have a live streaming thing. You don't really need to worry about that because this is about recording and stuff. So let's just ignore that for now. In your first scene, you got to go to your sources. Your microphone should already be connected and your desktop audio should also but if it's not you can go to properties go down to the one you're at so right now i am using the headset a20 voice so whenever i open up something like spotify i just press play and bam there it goes that's just an explanation on how that works so let's get straight into adding your like interface right so let's say you want to record on your computer instead of your console if you wanted to do that you could just do game capture bam slap that bad boy in there put auto or even specific window and you can click any of that stuff and it'll automatically connect to your gaming software but that's not what this tutorial is for so let's go straight into this once you want to record with your elgato software or any kind of capture device you want to go to your video capture device press add source uh, mine's an elgato so i'll be like the cat you know bam and then the Elgato capture card should pop up right there. It's being used by another thing. I think it's being used by OBS. So I might have to restart OBS just to get it working on here. So let me restart OBS, close it down so Streamlabs can take over it. There we go. Now that we got the uh, Nintendo Switch running, it'll create a new source. It should create a new source down here called the cat and it should ping in the sounds so let's kind of just open up a game and you should hear the sounds going through it and see the bar move up just a tad bit that's how you know the sounds are working on your elgato all you got to do at this point is just press record it should go into one of your folders that it's set to and it should be good from there but i will show you exactly what to do record bam once you press that it'll show a little timer showing you how long you've recorded it's a black screen right now because it's in the loading but trust me something's happening it's just loading as you can see it's coming from there and you should be able to record it from here so 13 14 15 seconds bam we'll just do a 17 second video and I'll show you how it works so you go to where you recorded the video right here is where the video is click on it record, and you can bam. see once you oh. press that it'll show a little timer showing you how see, long there there's my it. voice right there it's a black I'll just right mute now. it real quick loading, but, so I could show you exactly the video working bam there it goes let's turn it back on there's the music that means it's worked so the music works and everything the video works and bam there you go that's how you record and all that stuff and get it to work now this is how you separate your audio tracks which will be super useful for when you want to split it and edit individually let's go straight into your settings once you go into your settings you'll want to go to output and then recording and bam you'll have this thing called audio track you'll want to select up to three or four audio tracks depending on what you want and then once you do that you should be done with this area you press done oh also before I go out of that actually you could change the path that it takes the path that uh, your recording goes into by going into the recording path and press browse and then clicking on a new path so I have mine set to videos you know you just select the video folder and it'll be there and then bam it'll bring your video straight into there I think it should just bring it to your video folder on your C drive but you know just in case it doesn't there you go that's how you do that uh, into your mixer area you press the advanced audio options bam you see you got desktop mic and Elgato right so you want let's say you want different tracks right let's deselect all the other tracks real quick let's keep one of them up though you want to keep the first one up just in case you decide to keep it all together for some weird reason <laughs> i do it just in case anything else happens like something gets corrupted so let's put 
your desktop audio on the second one, your mic audio on the third one, and then your Elgato on the fourth one. This will separate each of the tracks and I'll show you exactly how it's separated, right? So let's do a quick recording again. Bam, bam, you know, just do a quick, quick test recording. It froze a little bit on the Elgato. I don't know why, but bam, bam, you know, sliding through and whatnot. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. Once that video is done, we'll go into our Premiere Pro. Now, depending on which software you get, this will be a little bit different for you, but let me show you exactly what happens. When you put down that video track right on there, you go to the video in your files, you pull that video straight out and slap that on the timeline and it, it'll show you exactly four tracks right here bam one two three four uh, one of them is all of them and we can honestly unlink it and get rid of it because we will not be using that uh, then you got I think this one will be your microphone this one will be the game audio and this one is your desktop audio as you can see nothing's on my desktop audio because I did not record anything on my desktop I could have put music up but I didn't didn't see the need for it since this is just a tutorial uh, that will be the back that one will be deleted as well since we don't need it all we did was our voice and the game so the desktop audio will be useful for when you have friends that you want to talk to you can talk to your friends on the computer and also have it mixed in that way if they say something you don't want in you could just mute them and not the whole tracks it'll be a lot easier that way this is what I do at least right so let's say Yo, what's going on? You can't even hear me. What's going on there, right? You got the audio mix tracks, man. You could turn down each one. So let's turn down the game audio, right? That is way too loud. You can barely hear me. Again, bam, bam. You know, just a quick, quick test recording. If there we go. See, now that the audio is down. Let's say I want my voice up, right? Like I want me to be louder. I can barely hear myself. Bam, bam. You know, just a quick, quick test. And now I know that I'll never do that because it makes the quality terrible. But that's how you split your audio and make it so, you know, you could fix and micromanage that kind of stuff. And bam, look, the, the screen looks pretty nice through the editing software now and all that. I don't have it on complete. I pause full, so it might be a little bit blurry. But that's how you do that. That's how you get it edited. You could render it and upload the video afterwards. And that's basically how I do all my business. So yeah, that's everything. Uh, thank you guys all for coming out and watching this tutorial. Hopefully it helped you. If it didn't, let me know in the comments what else you would want. I could cover it down in the comments or make a whole new video depending on how much I missed. Thank you guys very much for coming out. Have a really good night. Do not let the bed bugs bite. And have a great morning. If it's morning, I'll see you guys in the next one.